Hey everybody, it's Dr. Ron here with uh, Jonas Crafts, um, and we're going to talk about uh, some very disturbing things that that we've seen in the last 24 hours on um, on social media. And so, um, we're really going to talk about uh, uh, yesterday. We saw um, a news feed in my um, in my uh, in my phone that showed a Georgia high school football player uh, ultimately uh, collapsed and passed away, a 17 year old uh, at Pike County High School. Um, and, um, basically the report was that he said his legs went numb. He collapsed over, he was rushed to the hospital and then pronounced, uh, pronounced, uh, dead. And the cause of death was, was thought to be from a head injury. And so Jonas, I know you have a lot of experience with head injury. <laughs> so I want to talk your reactions to that and what, what happened to this poor, uh, poor 17 year old young man. You know, I mean, that, that's football. You're talking about head-on collisions. You're talking about hitting the ground. And I always say it's, it's not usually the first hit that happens. It's the second hit when your head hits the ground, right? The, the earth doesn't move. And so it's when we hit that ground, it hurts. But, you know, what happened is that he, he was fine and then later went in, you know, ba back into the game. And that's where, you know, I, I know we look at this game and I know we're overprotecting our quarterbacks right now, especially in the NFL. We're completely overprotecting them. But what about everybody else? Mm -hmm. You know, what are we doing for the game to make it safe for everybody else? You know, and to make sure that we have physicians, like you were on the sideline before, right? To help out with teams, you know, to make sure that that physician does what that physician is supposed to do to say, look, you were safe, go back in. Or, hey, if you had a major hit, let's hold you out. It's not worth going back in to play three or four, five more plays to not have, to, to not have a, a life you know, or to have difficulty living in the future because you want to go back in to play a game. Right. And sometimes the, the symptoms are pretty subtle, you know. Um, and back when I was, you know, on the sidelines of high school football games, it's really hard to determine uh, who has symptoms because your adrenaline is pumping, right? And then even if you're a little dizzy, you just thought it was normal, I mean, maybe I'll dehydrate. And even you have a little blurry vision, I was like, well, maybe just the hit took me out a little bit. Um, a lot of times concussions don't, aren't really apparent until after the game. And, um, and even beyond concussions, uh, major head injuries and brain bleeds yeah. aren't apparent at all. <laughs> Sometimes they don't have neurologic symptoms. Yeah. And the first neurologic symptom may actually be sudden death. And so that's where the, the scary part comes in, right? But, you know, I really encourage, you know, a lot of uh, young players um, to, it uh, doesn't matter if it's football, soccer, uh, anything with head injury, to really listen to your body and not to not to push it, and so you know we've seen a lot of people with a traumatic brain injury in my in my office, uh, uh, and, the, and the traumatic brain injury might have happened you know, 15, 20 years ago, and they're suffering major consequences: attention deficit, uh, chronic anxiety, chronic depression, emotional abilities, um, significant degrees of pain, <laughs> like yourself, huh? Yeah. And so, um, and I had those issues myself after my really bad concussion uh, after a snowboarding incident. And so, um, and so this, uh, this is a very emotional topic, I think, especially in Texas, you know, I, and I remember being on the sidelines and, and pulling some players out and the parents behind me were just yelling at me to get the oh, players yeah. back in. You know, there's a lot of pressure to do so. Um, but what I know is that there's neurologic symptoms and the, First few minutes after neurologic symptoms, if you put the player back in, they suffer traumatic, traumatically worse uh, brain injury and that is really hard or uh, irrecoverable. Uh, so when that happens, uh, what happens is that the brain is trying to make neurons and, 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 and connect again. And there's all sorts of proteins and inflammatory factors that get upregulated in the brain. Um, but you have that golden moment uh, one week after the actual injury for the brain to actually start healing. Um, um, if you, you know, if you survive the actual concussion, and obviously in this case, um, this is Georgia Hospital football player, um, poor kid, and he, uh, you know, and it's not very apparent. And I read, uh, I read somewhere that you know the the. His father just recently bought a uh, brand new uh, type of helmet that's supposed to help with uh, this we call primary trauma, right? And this secondary brain trauma, right? Mm -hmm. so, and the secondary so, brain so, Yeah, go ahead. 
here's my, I was going to say, here's my thing about yeah. equipment. Yeah. You know, we can look at, let's just look at your car, right? We all drive in cars. We can always get in an accident. There can always be a traumatic brain injury. I don't care how safe the car is. If right. the car gets hit a certain way, going fast enough or falling off something, I don't care what the equipment is. So when we look at football, we can try and get the best equipment, but what we have to do is really educate the athletes. Look, I mean, this is your life. We, we need to make life bigger than the game. And I know a lot of times, like, especially when I was growing up, you know, we were taught, Hey, lead with your head, lead your head yeah. because then you can knock somebody out. You know, and my yeah. dad who played football back in the late fifties, early sixties in the NFL, he taught me how to do that. You know, and I, I look at, I look back at it now and say, you know, I think we're getting better at teaching had a hit, but we have to tell these kids, look, it's a game because I, and I didn't, I didn't understand this when I was playing, but I think we need more former athletes to come to, to come up front to the front lines to say, look, this is a game. You know, we don't have to sit here and, and keep banging each other, keep banging each other. When I was in high school, I played offensive tight end and defensive end. Yeah. I was only out for special teams. So it's hit, hit, hit. And then you said, what you said right there was get the golden hour, the golden age after you get your head hit is let it rest for a week. Guess right. what? We got to practice again. There's no resting. And so that, that's it's some of the scary stuff that we have to look at and say, what can we do as a community to be better and smarter about this? So that way we're not losing kids that are just wanting to play a game and they're wanting to go and play their heart out. And, you know, what, what can we tell the parents and how can we get them involved to say, look, you know what? I want the best for my child without being scared, right? That's like saying right. never drive a car. Right. No, we're not never going to drive, but let's, let's be more aware. Let's try and do the right thing when possible. Let, let's create more cameras around the car. Let's create, you know, more lights everywhere. So that way people can see it. You know, we have to be able to do that in, the, in this type of game or in, in all sports. Right. And so, you know, how, um, how you know, it's, it's funny because, you know, we're talking about the different types of helmets and all these different things. But in the end, you know, for this kid, it didn't matter. For a lot of people, it doesn't matter. Right. Um, you know, once you have trauma, you have trauma there. And, you know, some people are genetically predisposed to have more traumatic brain injury uh, sequela than other people. And these people with particular, you know, um, genotypes, something called the APOE4 gene which is now called Alzheimer's genes, but I call it a concussion gene as well. Uh, because what happens is that it keeps this low, uh, low line inflammation in the brain as well as the, in the gut as actually, um, for a very long period of time. And the design of this gene originally was to help us combat chronic infections, maybe a few thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, and unfortunately these chronic, chronic inflammation, uh, levels, which used to be helpful to us, um, back in the day, are no longer helpful and they're actually quite harmful because you know a lot of things that we eat a lot of things that we inhale the pollution it causes these chronic underlying inflammation that's in the brain and so um yes there's there's genetic predisposition to it and the, there was an idea that came up last year someone asked me um you know should my kid continue to play football he's had two concussions and uh, one of the things that uh, she had a genetic testing done, and, she, and this kid had an APL E4 uh, slash 4, basically a homozygous for this, this mutation. And, um, well, if you look at the statistics, if you have APL E4 slash 4, I mean, that's a over 80% progression towards some sort of neurologic decline in the lifetime. Okay, and I'm able to eat three slash four. I have one copy of the genes, about 64% towards neurologic decline sometime in my lifetime. I've already experienced that in my previous concussion. And so there's genetic predisposition, and then there's, um, and then there's you know, that golden period after the concussion is when you're supposed to just rest in a dark room, chill out, don't go on iPhones, iPads, anything else, let your brain heal. And it's very hard to do for, for, a lot of, uh, for a lot of young players, right? Or just people in general, I think these days, they're really hard to do. And <laughs> not grab your cell phone and start texting. But that golden period is, uh, is very, very important because you really want to decrease the stimuli coming in. So to my loud noises and lights and everything like that. And even if you're not sensitive to lights uh, or to sound, you should still sit that period out. And, um, and so the, the main concern during that period is that if you do have a lot of stimuli coming in, it disrupts the neuroregenerative process, the brain regeneration. And uh, we've seen that sort of over and over again. But, um, 
But Jonas, I, I want to give you a couple tidbits about, about uh, shortly after the actual trauma that most people don't know about. So there's a lot of studies done on a ketogenic diet right after traumatic brain injury. Okay, mm -hmm. the first study was actually done uh, on uh, people with uh, brain hemorrhage. And uh, they have significant, significant neural recovery, significant neural recovery when the brain is burning ketones. Okay, it's ketogenic diet with intermittent fasting, the 16-8 intermittent fasting or 12-12 intermittent fasting. So 16-8 means fasting for 16 hours and eating for eight during the daytime. 12-12 is called circadian rhythm fasting. You're technically wanting to eat during the daytime and not have anything at nighttime. And because there's, there's neural endocrine systems in our brain that are optimized when that happens. And so, um, uh, you know, and I use this process in people who have had concussions or traumatic brain injuries shortly afterwards. But in the long run, uh, people can have that the, the uh, initial injury years ago and still do well on a ketogenic diet. But that golden period is, uh, is, is, uh, is very, very near and dear. Mm -hmm. So what I heard earlier was that we can start testing for these degenerative diseases, just like if it has a heart issue, right? We will yeah. pull them out of the game. They can't play unless they pass a physical. So maybe we could look at something like a neuro testing to be able to say, look, can you play or not, right? Same thing with the heart. Is the heart going to be function for them to play or not? So is that what I heard? Yeah, so there's a couple things. The first is the impact test that came out uh, in the 90s. And that is useful to an extent. Um, and uh, there's a little controversy surrounding the impact, which is a basically uh, if you, um, an exam, if you will, of looking at concentration, cognitive thought, and everything like that. Um, and, uh, you know, we would impact uh, test our, our football players or, or whoever gets the concussions. Um, uh, not directly after the concussion, but after we assess them maybe the following week and they don't have any neurologic symptoms, we impact them to see if they actually come in. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's one test that we can do. A lot of the, uh, the high school football trainers, they have access to this. A lot of the independent school districts do. Uh, but most still don't, obviously. And most, most intermediate school districts don't have a physician like me on their sidelines, you know. And uh, in, in our school district, you know, you have me plus an orthopedic surgeon on the sidelines. And so, yeah. it's, uh, it's, you know, that's, that's Texas for you, right? Uh, and so it's, that's a luxury, but most schools don't have it, right? And then the other thing is that if they, have, if they have these concussive injuries, you know, now there are certain neurologic tests and brain scans and, that, are, that are derived from the EEGs, electroencephalogram, that can look at specific brainwave patterns uh, that uh, may be inhibited or damaged um, in these players. And of course, there's genetic testing for APOE4, and that's just the gene test of predisposition. So yeah, I think there's multiple things we can do. So, so I, and this is coming from an athlete who loved yeah. to be an athlete, right? So, yes. and I love how Tony Robbins says this. He says, there's a science of achievement, right? And as yeah. athletes, we understand that achievement, we wanna go at it, and we call that competition, and that competitiveness, and that, that heart of a champion. But on the other end, there's the art of fulfillment. Mm -hmm. So, because what I hear you saying, I, I, I understand it makes sense, but after we win a football game, I'm probably not going to want to fast. <laughs> I, after I just went for three hours, I'm probably not only gonna to wanna to eat my face off, but I'm also probably gonna to wanna to drink some, some, some beverages, uh, whether or not I'm, I was in high school, I was in college, or I was in the pros, it, it's you go out to celebrate. And, and I find that interesting that you said that, but I find it very difficult for people to follow through to that. Yeah, so that's what I, would, I would rather look at preventative, uh, you know, like the testing or, or what other nutrients can we get in the body to, to help you right. know, create that. And, and I know you and I have talked about protein and, and muscles, you know, but if we could do something for the brain, you know, because, yeah, I know in theory, there's a lot of things that are going to work, but in a perfect world, which I, I'm not sure, but we don't live in. <laughs> right. So it's, it's really difficult for people to say, hey, you know what, I'm going to fast after I played a game, kick ass, I'm going to fast, you know, and, and do the keto. And so that's where I look at more testing. I, I look at, gosh, different ways. Now, now if, we could, if we could instill that into our athletes and say, look, this is what you need. This is how you have to do it. That would be phenomenal. I, I'm getting chills right now thinking, Wow, what if we could do that? As opposed to guys saying, "Hey, let's go party." But I mean, you see 
all the athletes, what, champagne showers, you, all baseball's going on right now. Everybody's getting into the playoffs. They all have their, their goggles, their ski goggles on because they're champagne and, and Bud Light in the, in, in the locker room. And right. so how can we be realistic about this as well? Because people like to have fun. People like to celebrate, especially after a big <clears throat> victory. You can be realistic by by risk stratification in color, right? So if you know you have the genes to not do well with brain injury, if you know that you have some micronutrient deficiencies, or if you know that you know on a, a preventative brain scan that um, there's already areas that could be damaged, then you might not want to have you know of all that celebration. Right. So it's to find out <laughs> who can and who can't because I know when I got my my brain tested. Dr. Juan, it's, it's, it's sat in the back of my, it literally in the back of my head, just saying, what the heck am I doing? How can I do better? What, but we've never tested our brains before as athletes, yeah. as, as human society, we've never done this. And so I think every time I, you know, I go to the doctor, I have patients that come into my office. What do we check? All their vitals. We check their oxygen. We check their blood. We check their urine. Right. We check all the organs, except for that of this bad boy up here. So I think once we start in this and we start getting your mind right, right. <laughs> that's where we're going to start to see something different right there. And I'm excited. And I, again, my, my, my calling was always get your mind right because it was, Hey, be, be positive, you know, have your attitude, have your belief. You know, that's what I meant by get your mind right. But now it's almost taking a whole new turn into get your mind right. You know, and let's it, really see is. That. it really is. And in, in, in my practice, uh, when we look at, um, uh, neuro behavioral and cognitive status you know we use uh, we use neuroscience um uh, evoke uh, evox scan if you will and this uh, this evox scan is looking at particular patterns and Jonas, we did it for you uh, very shortly um uh not too long ago was it a week or two weeks ago i guess two weeks ago yeah two weeks ago and we were able to find a lot of stuff about your brain that you didn't know but you're right all the rest of your tests were normal even your ultrasounds and everything your, your vitals everything was completely normal right except that brain scan test and that told us you know why you were having underlying uh, neurological emotional behavioral issues and we were able to pinpoint areas that uh that were very very significant for uh previous traumatic brain injury right and so it gives that sort of validation uh of uh, of things because a lot of times i think you were just assuming that this is from tbi and now we we know it's from tbi Right. And so, um, but it, it puts you in a risk category of having worse neurological outcomes if we don't do something about it. So I think that's a very important thing to, to test for. One thing we haven't done for you is actually genetic testing. Um, and so that's, that could be another, another, uh, another risk stratification. If you do have the, the, uh, it's not just A B E four. There's there's actually seven or eight genes that we look at. There's MTHFR, MTRR, system B synthase, vitamin D receptors. Um, there's there's a lot of those that we actually look for um, as a risk stratification. So I think we can make uh, informed decisions for ourselves. But going back to the Georgia high school football player kid, you know, I just want the parents to know and the family to know and the world to know that there's nothing they could have done to prevent this. There's yeah. nothing. You can have the best nutrients in the world. You can. You know, we can do all kinds of scanning, kind of a million dollar workup. Nothing would have prevented something like this. This is really, you know, it's, it's a freak accident. And unfortunately, you know, as much as we try to you know, protect our, our children, sometimes this just does happen. And I feel terrible, terrible for, for, the, uh, for the high school and the football team and for uh, the family, of course. And yeah, to the, to the Thomas family, my condolences 100%. To all the, the family um at the pike school all my condolences as well because it's it's not nobody wants to lose you know somebody that young and an athlete and somebody who's really trying to do their best and it's it's tough i know it's not fair life isn't fair but if we can take this and we can learn from it we can we can help the next person you know that that's the only thing that we can do now but definitely my condolences go out to that entire community the family um it's tough and, and yeah nobody wants to see that including myself from over here Right. And just, um, you know, ending on that note, I just want to um, talk about a few things that people can do on mm -hmm. the prevention side before going to the football field, soccer field, whatever it is. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, there's a few nutraceuticals that I really like giving that helps stabilize the, the neuro and brain membranes and the immune system. Uh, one is phosphatidylcholine. It's kind of a big word. 
Um, but false title choline is fantastic. There's another one um, that is false title serine, and these are actually uh, precursors to help in this uh, neurotransmitter and brain generation. Uh, omega threes in general, the the optimal omega six to omega three ratio um, is a four to one ratio. That's in the diet. No one's getting twenty five percent of their fats of omega threes. I guarantee that. So it's good to take these omega threes, and also take it from a good source with certificate. Uh, of, uh, of analysis that's shown that there's no mercury in, in that fish because mercury is heavily neurotoxic. Um, and uh, there's an, uh, another population uh, out there um, that no one knows about, and I was one of them, um, and that's the population where we actually have uh, silver fillings from back in the you know, 80s and 90s oh, yeah. before that. And there's uh, there's a tons of mercury that, mercury that off-gas in there. And if you're a sports athlete, and you have that in there, and during these hits, guess what's happening? You're all vaporing your mercury, going across the blood-brain barrier, causing major, major neurologic issues, which also predispose to a lot of traumatic brain injury. And in fact, if you look at a lot, a lot of people with Alzheimer's disease, they, they actually have a lot of mercury toxicity within these people as well. And so, you know, those are things to, to really look out for. And the ketogenic diet. I'm a big fan of the ketogenic diet. If you're having neurologic symptoms from concussions or TBI, um, try that for a month and, and actually see the results. If you have just had, had an injury, then try that as well. And if you're going into season, into football and training and stuff like that, um, there's a lot of athletes that are very pro-keto um, because you produce less lactic acid, okay? Mm -hmm. You're able to last longer. You have a high amount of caloric storage during, during the games. And then your brain and your muscles, your body loves running on these ketones. And so um, that's something to really, really try out. And, uh, and this goes sort of against the theory of carb loading, right? <laughs> so we used to carb load all the time. Um, but uh, it works for some people. It doesn't work for most people, actually. Um, um, but you can do carb cycling. But I don't want to get too much into that right now. But uh, if you are having neurological symptoms out there, I really suggest uh, to just go try and go on keto for a month. Uh, mixed with uh, intermittent fasting, of uh, 16 fasting and eight, uh, eight eating. And um, one thing uh, about keto and one thing about traumatic brain injury is that bacon is not keto. I don't care what anybody <laughs> says. Uh, bacon is just one example of a high temperature cooked protein that gets that char on the outside. A char on the outside uh, actually stimulates insulin secretion, so it acts like sugar <laughs> when the protein is cooked high. And so, um, and so uh, it's able to knock people out of ketosis. And even if you're in ketosis, uh, your insulin's still high. It defeats the purpose of the ketogenic diet. A ketogenic diet should be uh, involving plenty of, uh, plenty of green leafy vegetables or purple leafy vegetables um, uh, that are incorporated into it for high amounts of fiber. And so that's what is going to help your brain. So... Um, but yeah, Jenna, I just want to conclude that, uh, you know, my heart really goes out to the family. Amen. Um, but I think, uh, I think this is something that we're going to continue to talk about later on. Yeah. Uh, and maybe look at a few other cases that's been going on, um, in and out of the NFL, high school sports, and, 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 uh, and even the X games, there's a few players who have suffered tremendously from the X games. Um, and so we'll continue this discussion of brain health. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and I just want to finish by saying, you know, how, how you said my, my entire body was good. But at the end of the day, this, it's what happened to my dad. The brain, the data center, if it's not functioning, yeah, I don't care about the rest of the body. I don't care if you're as healthy as can be. If this is dead, everything is done. So what can we do? And I'm excited for our future to see what we can bring to the world uh, for, from a medical standpoint to say, here's what we can do differently. Here's how we can test it. Here's what we can do to, for, you know, preventative medicine, regenerative medicine, and all, all forms throughout so that way we keep everybody safe, happy, and healthy so that way they can go out and play the games that they love to play. Right, absolutely. And, and Jonas will, you know, just announce to the world that we're going to be working on, on some exactly this, right? Uh, getting Amen. your program together. Look at not just traumatic brain injury, uh, but uh, prevention and recovery and even, uh, even uh, progressive neurologic degeneration from tra traumatic injury uh, recovery can happen. I've seen it in my clinic. It can definitely happen. Let's get it. Yeah. All right, thanks a lot, man. Thanks a lot for being on the Zoom call. I appreciate that. Thanks, Dr. Wong. Uh, yeah, so uh, if you want to follow Jonas, uh, his Facebook page is it's Coach Crafts. 
And then, um, well, you guys know me because I'll be posting this. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, if you have any questions, please feel free uh, to comment below, comment in the comments below. And uh, please share this. I think this is very important to share. And I think it's important for people to know, understand that there actually are some things that we can do about this. So, all right. Cool deal. Right. Thank you. Sounds good. Appreciate it.